services from mental health to uh, resource training and so much more but definitely when it comes to black men lead rite of passage and the support we are trying to uh, develop and build towards properly socializing young black males to mitigate uh, african-american adolescent and young adult male violence to mitigate dropout rates and incarceration rates to mitigate intimate partner and homicide and domestic violence uh, and to improve the chances of business ownership and pro-social behavior. Uh, all of this is important. All of the groups have rite of passage programs. This isn't just some celebration of manhood. This is literally how you condition a young male to productively move into manhood and we are missing that in our community primarily because we're missing 1.5 million men and we have a lot of men who are hurting and erroneously present meaning that they're there but they are actually probably a poor model and actually worsening the situation we really need to understand the importance of socialization i have done an immense amount of work on the topic uh, in academic papers, in books. Uh, the development of the program Back Black Man Lead is off the heels of research in ways to mitigate African-American adolescent and young adult male violence. And so we definitely need support. We need a national network. We need to be able to have a universal rite of passage with a universal definition of what black manhood is and how you aspire to it and achieve it. There needs to be a clear understanding of what we're aiming for. And I think we lack that. And so that's going to be a, a consistent passion of mine. And there's so much more. If you've been to the site, if you follow me, you know that I have been in the game for a long time and I've gone across the gambit of dealing with the enigmatic issues we face in our community. And I will continue to do so through the research arm of Odyssey Project uh, through the think tank uh, mechanism that we also operate. There's so much going on and we need to be at the center of change and I'm asking for your support. Now on to something that I just have to address. There are times for technical uh, conversations. There are time for academic and intellectual conversations. There are time for downright, straight up, this is how it is conversations. And we sort of had one of those yesterday. And then there's time for those heart to heart. It's time to wake up. This should be common sense conversations. Uh, you know, that thing that should be common sense, but it's not very common. Uh, we remain the most easily distracted and misguided people on the planet. I'm sorry, I can't find another group with this large, and I'm talking specifically about African Americans. I'm talking about close to 50 million people. Uh, by far the most creative and resourceful people in this country for sure. And I believe on the planet we can create and come up with some of the most unbelievable things. We provide so much for other uh, economies. We are the commodity in many of the high dollar industries. And yet here we are at the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder. And we're frustrated and we point fingers and we get angry. And we are easily distracted. We're fed stimuli and, and, and content that trigger us, get us hyped up while we're constantly being guided towards something that doesn't produce any results. Someone posted earlier today about this ongoing division between black men and black women. 
are there issues that we need to work out? Has there been pain? Has there been hurt? Has there been failure? Absolutely. But the, the divisiveness is systematic. It is devised and created for the purpose of division. You've heard me say this before. Back when J. Edgar Hoover was the director of the FBI, he was being interviewed and he was asked, what is the greatest threat to national security? Now you gotta understand that when he's asked this question, we're on the heels of the Cuban Missile Crisis. We are in a cold war with the Soviet Union. China is starting to beat its drum as it's building its economic power and uh, moving toward a claim of world power. Uh, we have so many other things going on in the Middle East where the anti-American uh, sentiments are extremely high. And yet, J. Edgar Hoover's response when asked what's the greatest threat to national security was black unity. COINTELPRO was a intel program created in the FBI to infiltrate black nationalist group like the Black Nationalist Party, the Black Panther Party, and any other uh, entities that uh, were galvanizing and creating unity and creating autonomy within the black community. What you gotta understand is the Black Panther Party is often through media presented at this radical group that walked around and carried guns. What you don't realize is the WIC program comes from the Black Panther Party. The Black Panther Party wasn't simply a radical anti-police group. It was a very pro-black, self-sufficient, uh, self, uh, minded, sufficient-minded, black organization that did a great deal of work in the community, galvanized the community, brought them together, and they were a threat to literally the way things move and operate in this country. They were a threat to the status quo, and COINTELPRO is how they dismantled, brought down, imprisoned many, exiled many. We still have Asada Shakur living in Cuba because they want to imprison her here. And we have to understand they criminalized loving on our people and targeted our people and they have systematically since created situations and heightened uh, certain sensitive areas and created a situation where we consistently go after each other and we don't recognize it. All we know is our pain is triggered and we want to attack what we believe to be the source of our pain. Black men are blaming black women. I have a major issue with a man blaming a woman for something. I'm not saying that a man shouldn't hold a, a woman accountable. I need to be very careful with that. I, I, I'm, when I say blaming a woman, I don't mean not holding her accountable. I don't mean not sitting up saying, hey, what you doing? That's some, that's some BS or whatever what i'm saying is a man that's sitting up and actually blaming a woman for everything that's wrong in the community without taking ownership of a community that he is supposed to be the head of when you're supposed to be the head when you're the top when you're the king when everything is resting and operating in a dominion that you're supposed to be ruling you're responsible it, it's not about who did it it's about how are you going to manage it? Because if you can't manage it, you can't be king. If you can't, con if you can't manage and properly create the right environment, the right production, the right real um, situations, then you don't deserve to be king. So if you're going to claim the crown, it comes with responsibilities. I'm not saying that women don't have some culpability. We both know that to be the case. What I'm saying is, what role are we going to play in fixing it? Because you're not just going to bully her into doing something. You're not just going to manipulate her into doing something. So what do you bring to the table that says, okay, this is what I need from you. Can we get to this place? Because that's how you're going to have to solve things. Sitting up. Let me tell you something. Something my grandfather taught me as a young kid. And it, 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 and it structured how I was going to solve problems for the rest of my life, how I was going to face challenges for the rest of my life. I've had a bunch of them this year, but let me tell you something. He sat up and told me, complaining has never fixed anything, so I don't wanna hear it. 
What I want to hear when you come to me is not your complaining, not your whining. I want you to come to me and tell me, tell me, I tried this, this, and this, but it's not working. What do you suggest? I need help. It's nothing wrong with needing help, son. It's nothing wrong with saying you've done your best and you, you, you're flabbergasted. But what you won't do is come to me whining and complaining because that doesn't fix anything. It has never fixed anything and it never will. You can point your finger and blame a person a million times. It doesn't change the situation. All it does is give that person more and more power. All it does is give that situation that you're whining about more power. What are you going to do about it? What strategic approach are you going to take? We can't do that because we're too easily distracted. We're talking about canceling somebody. We don't even have the power to cancel. You got $175 in your bank account. And you really think you're canceling a billionaire because he said something or they framed what he said in a certain way. I'm not taking a side on it. I'm observing it and I'm looking at it and I'm watching how we are moving exactly the way they want to want us to because they are trying and it's always around have you noticed that these type things are always at the height when it's election time you would think that by now we would have picked up on the pattern that we would have recognized we're being played again it's election time and here comes the bs the bottom line is we are going to end up voting for democrats again when i say we i don't mean me I mean, we as a collective, because I own my people, I, I, I claim my people, and I, I don't isolate myself from my people because they're not doing what I think they should be doing. They're my people, so if if, if, if the collective is doing it, I, I'm, caught, I'm caught in the trap. Am I doing it? No. I learned a long time ago that's not where my power lies. It, definitely not trusting Democrats, and I don't trust Republicans either. So then what you do, you have to create a source of power so you find the right people, regardless of what their party is, and say, hey, this is what I'm going to invest in you. This is what I'm going to need from you in return. If I don't get it, I won't be investing you again, and I will out you to the other people who may be willing to invest in you that you don't keep your word. I'm going to play the game with you at a certain level. I may not be able to do a whole lot by myself, but I'm going to get another group of brothers who have businesses, who have money to get behind you. But hey, look, this is what we're going to need from you. And it may be a situation where initially we just need you to make room and make rules and set up places for our businesses to flourish. And we're going to take the what, 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 what our businesses produce and do what we need to do for our community. We don't. Yeah, we, we're going to talk about the reparations because that's not a handout. That's what you owe us. See, we earn that with blood, sweat, tears, death, uh, years of trauma. And we're still suffering at the hands of an inequitable system. So that's owed to us. But we understand uh, it's going to take all kind of uh pressure and pushing to get that so we need to do something in the interim we need to be responsible and empower how do we empower ourselves by enriching ourselves how do we do that by creating situations that we control by the money we make in other words i'm real big on holding black businesses accountable it's one thing to tell people about buy back buy black but I'm like, okay, if we're telling people to buy black and we are labeling you as a black business, what are you returning to the community? You don't get to pocket all the profits and walk away just because you're black. We're going to need you to commit a certain amount of your profits to the development of the community. What are you going to do? I, did, I, I said this a long time ago. If you go to the website, you'll see that that was an initiative that I was putting together to get black businesses on board on. Look, what? so if I put you on the list and I promote you as a black business and I say, okay, we're sanctioning your movement and operation in the black community and we're promoting you, we're going to need a percentage of your profits to be designated. And we want to reserve the right to determine where because it depends on when and where uh, we bring you into this. So it may be community development. It may be educational resources. It may be business uh, development. It may be uh, real estate development. But whatever it is, we need to restore and build the black community, us. We don't need them coming in, gentrifying and doing it. We need to build it. We need to benefit from the increased value of building the community up. They are coming in, building the community up 
benefiting from the va increased value and driving us out simultaneously. This consistent serial force displacement is causing and wreaking havoc. I've written on serial force displacement. It's not just the movement, it's uh, the disbursement of what little local voting power you have. It's disbursement of collective spending and funding and being able to operate as a community and serve one another. When you are dispersed, you're not all relocated to the same place. You're becoming more and more dissipated as a group and less, less powerful. And that's what they're wanting as part of how they operate. But we have to be aware. Stop being distracted by the superficial and things on the surface and understand there's always a plan going on. There's always something happening. And we are never on top of it because we are caught up in our feelings. We're caught up in our emotions. I tell you all the time, you know, it does very little good when, a, when, 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 when you see a black man uh, get upset because he's going through a breakup and kill a black woman. It, it, it does very little to be upset after the fact. That's something that should have been dealt with when he was developing it in, 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 in an emotion, an understanding of his emotions. Uh, when he should have been working towards emotional maturity and emotional intelligence and emotion, when he should have been developing a, a, a stronger sense of self-esteem and self-worth by the establishment of a foundational self-image where he could understand that it's okay for someone to say they don't want to be with you. It, it's not a direct hit to your worth or your value. And the, the feeling of the only power I have is to force somebody to be with me. And if they can't be with me, then I'm going to end it all. That is an issue that we should be dealing with, but we won't deal with it because we are caught up in all the other stuff that do doesn't have intrinsic value and the things that matter on the front end that require work, that require, require resources, that require us to actually focus in and say, this is what we're going to do. We don't want to get involved in that. It's not pretty. It's not flashy. It, matter of fact, it calls on us to be responsible. It calls on us to reach inside of our wallets. It calls on us to be honest with ourselves. It calls on some of us to admit that we are the ones who need the help. We don't want to look at that. We want to act like everything is great. We want to pretend because we can walk off in Louis Vuitton that the world has changed and that we have have made it and the truth of the matter we haven't we're constantly pumping our resources back into their economy and they are the ones oppressing us how in the world you know have you ever thought about how crazy it is to be funding your own demise think about it when you spend back into the economy of the oppressor, you're funding your demise. You're funding your oppression. You should be ciphering every bit and ounce of financial resources and material wealth you can out of it so that you can turn around and sit up and do something with it. But you you can't pump it back in there. But that's one of the reasons they don't mind paying certain people who deserve. They don't mind paying entertainers because they're gonna go out and they're gonna show that they balling. They don't mind playing athletes. So they're gonna go out and buy the most expensive cars and they're gonna get the chain. They don't mind all of that. Why? Because the vast majority aren't up on the importance of developing wealth and investing in the community. Now there are some, and for the brothers and sisters that's doing it, we love you, we appreciate you. You are making a, a an impression and you're making a dent. The problem is the dent isn't big enough because so many others aren't. And then there's so many that won't even go after building so that they can be a part of the contributing uh, force. These are things that we should be looking at. That should be a consistency of growth. That should be a consistency of development. I have nothing wrong with you expressing yourself and getting yourself something nice if you work for it. You should experience that. I'm not sitting up and saying that you take everything that you earn and pour it off into something. I'm definitely not saying that. I've put way more than I should off into this, but I'm believing in what I'm doing is leaving a legacy that will benefit my children. So I'm, I'm, I'm paying it forward to my children and a future generation in a way that I'm hoping that it's going to cover them. And I'm believing that it's going to cover them. But what I'm saying is we are going to have to do something different. All of this stuff that they're putting out there and they're going to get us. Look at what the Republicans are doing. And Trump, they, they, they love throwing Trump name out there. When did not being a supporter of Trump make you a good person? I know a bunch of straight up killers that don't like Hitler. And I, I'm not sitting up 
choosing one side or other, none of that argument. But I'm just saying, just because you say I'm not Trump doesn't make you a good person. Tell me what you're doing for me. Nobody is telling you nothing. They're just sitting up saying, Candace Owens, Kanye West, Donald Trump, Herschel Walker, and we losing our mind all over. Oh Have you sit down and actually did the math? Have you sit down and actually looked at what we've gotten under a Democratic administrations? We got bust and killed by the current president back in the 70s. That same person turned around and did the crime bill in the early 90s. We still ain't recovered from that one. Now, the Republicans haven't did us any favors either. But they're not at least, at least they're not lying to us, telling us that they're the best thing since sliced bread for black folks. You pretty much know where they're coming from. They let you know, hey. If you ain't out here getting this money, if you ain't no business owner, you're probably not going to fill us. And that ain't just black people. That's middle class and lower. You're you, 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 you probably not going to fill us. And nobody's ever thought, man, if I don't like what they're talking about, maybe I need to go get me a business. Maybe I understand it better. But what I can tell you is the social programs and the way that they're moving and making. That's the thing. When you make a person, when you make a group of people dependent upon you, they become extremely loyal to you but they never become empowered. The programs you think were there to help you crippled you. And you don't understand it because you don't understand the dynamics of social advancement and socioeconomics and wealth building and all these other things. The thing is, we don't need you to give us anything. What we need you to do is get out of our way so we can get it on our own. What we need is equal asset access to the things that other people and other groups and other racial enclaves have. We don't need you saying, just go over here. We got you. No, because in return for that, you're going to want us to give you this law support that you don't deserve. And you're going to want us to play with you for 60 goddamn years. And you tell us something and don't deliver us nothing. And we don't even get to ask for anything. I mean, in, I'm in the state of Texas. And up until a couple of weeks ago, Beto O'Rourke ain't have shit to do with black people. Now that we are a few weeks away from an election, here he comes. And they're going to jump on it like crazy. Now he's not telling, but he's been with other groups. He's been, he's been uh, pandering to other groups for over a year. He's been coming hard trying to get them to... Uh, to, 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 to uh, get get behind him And he's been making all kind of promises They ain't came to us for Jack Why? Because he's a Democrat He's gonna He knows what game to run He's gonna show up at a few churches Across the state He's gonna make a couple of uh, an, uh, A couple of announcements He's gonna use the word racist And racial a few times Get us hyped and here they come And we get absolutely nothing for it I don't give a damn if you're racist I wanna know about your policies I don't care if you're a bigot, what's your policy? Because if I understand your policies, I can operate around them. I can sit up and get what I can out of a policy when I understand it, I know what you're doing. But when you're actually using me and I'm not getting anything out of it, oh, I got a problem with that and you should too. But no, we're gonna give them 90% of our vote religiously. And we haven't got a damn thing. Let me let me explain something to you, so you you don't think I'm just throwing stuff out there. In the '60s, black owner black home ownership was 41 percent. Guess what black home ownership is right now? 41 percent. Oh, we look like we've advanced. If you don't have home ownership, you are missing one of the major components of of wealth building. Now you got to get to the point where you actually own the home. We, 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 41%. And we're wondering why the wealth gap is what? Widening. So the wealth gap is actually wider now than it was when the Voting Rights Act was passed. <sighs> we have a lot of work to do. They say knowing is half the battle. 
and I believe that to be true, but that's also that, that, that also has to be action. In addition to knowing there has to be action, and unfortunately, uh, we're sitting on our ass. That's just what, what we're doing. I'm just being honest with you. I'm going to get off of here. I'm going to get in and process my day and then determine what I'm going to do to close out my day. But this is my daily break. Uh, so I'm going to get in here um, and have some camaraderie and talk about some of the things I'm talking about with you guys right now. But again, I'm asking you, if you believe in the work we're doing, we need you to give. I, I love getting the comments, the compliments, the big ups and encouragement. It helps. But what would really help is to sit up and say, we've got to do something. Let's get after it. Uh, to be one. Uh, thanks for your support. You were the one person who donated on Sunday when I asked for the the thousand dollar push. Uh, thank you. Uh, and I am going to again challenge between today and tomorrow. I want I want to do another thousand dollar push. The thousand dollars isn't going to cover a whole lot. It doesn't take an expert at anything to understand if you're doing something where you're working and helping people across the country that it costs and it costs more than you can imagine um and it's just the reality of it but what it does is it mitigates it and it i mean it, when you have other people that are sitting up and working with you and they're seeing this and they're giving everything they got and we're going and we're doing everything when someone says we said man we raised a thousand dollars they get excited because now they feel validated you got so many people busting their ass i've been doing it so long that i've just gotten used to this and they get frustrated with me with that but i've just learned you ask for something a couple of times, people don't do it. You're wasting your time asking, go do it. But it's not fair to everybody else and it's not fair to me and my family for me to keep going in like that. So I had to stop that. So it's a people being put on wait list now. I'm gonna do whatever I can, but I'm never gonna do it when I'm hurting my family again. But what I will tell you is what we do in organizations like us in the next five years is going to be central to whether or not we show up in this country ever. And you can look at it any kind of way you want to and uh, big ups to Dr. Claude Anderson who played a major role in the develop, well, well, in validating and critiquing the uh, Blueprint 2.0, which is the blue blueprint for uh, black the black black empowerment, which is on the website if you want to check it out. Uh, I, I worked on that for years. I got it to him and his wife. I got it to a few other people. His wife Joanne, and they literally gave me their approval. But we had a little impasse in this conversation. This is 2000. I want to say 2014, um, and the impasse was he had already. Uh, to come to the idea that 2013, which was his deadline, said if we didn't change how we were moving and operating on an economic level, we were going to become a permanent underclass in this country. He believed we had reached that point. And my argument was, I don't think so. I think that we can always overcome it. And mathematically, he had an, an argument spiritually and creatively, I believed I did. And that was the only impasse. And I respectfully sit up and, you know, uh, agree to disagree on that but the thing is he has taught us so much and came to us in so many ways and again not knowing everything not being perfect I don't demand perfection from anybody because I can't deliver it what I demand is a heart of, of, of a person that's giving everything and got that man gave us his life uh, Dr. Uh, Naeem Agbar, Dr. Amos Wilson, uh, Dr. Khaled Muhammad, Dr. Francis Chris Wilson, Dr. Joy DeGruy, Dr. Howard Stevenson, and I can go on to people that I have been around, and I'm telling you that we owe them more than we're giving them in the way that we're going to follow up their work. So again, I'm asking for support. 
on that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here and get in. You guys have an unbelievable day, and I'll check in on you later. I'm out.